What's up, guys? Welcome back to Wednesday Night Fights. My name is Crack Fiend, and this is... I, I'm Brass. Yes, and we are about to enter our top four for Street Fighter V tonight. And for our top four on the winner's side, we have no respect going up against oh, AM Kid. That is actually the loser side. On the loser side, uh, loser is, semis. <laughs> it says no respect versus AM Kid. Mm -hmm. And on the winner's side is uh, LPN and Genesis Frenzy. So Genesis Frenzy going to be rocking that Laura and winner's side. LPN has been uh, rocking Birdie, but that's not the match that we have. Yeah, the match that we have are between these two fellas. Long, long history. Oh, yeah. And they fight so often. Uh, AM Kid, you know, doesn't really stream Street Fighter V anymore. He primarily practices offline. Yeah. So that makes one of his primary offline sessions is is training with LPN and crew. So no respect uh, is a part of that mm -hmm. practice session. So these guys are basically training partners. So the mind games definitely go deep between these two. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, even before the before he went offline. Mm -hmm. um, he, he was playing against Ted quite a bit online as well, and, and he had oh, yeah. Ted's um, number for a hot minute. I mean, no respect, grinds online a ton. Grandmaster, both of these guys are Grandmaster. So no, no surprise that they would match up online quite a bit. And yeah, I mean, AM Kid, he's been so strong for the past year. Explosive growth in a very short period of time. Well, he puts in the commitment, he puts in the time. And, and then he really takes it seriously on top of oh, having absolutely. fun and being just a wonderful person in general. Not, uh, yeah, you can't say too much good stuff about him. Let's see if Ted can take it to him in the match. I don't know what their personal offline history is, but what I know is that AM Kid made a mess of the tournament last week. Oh, yeah, he bopped everybody when that was gone. He, he played unreal. Yeah, I saw some of the replays. Oh, my God. Strong went for reads. the... Yeah, that's a three-frame gap. That's really good knowledge by AM Kid, and just a better jump in to follow that up. Yeah, like you said, great three-frame reversal. It's very committed, more committed than something like a jab, but it can uh, extend your combos there for a bit. Norspec playing a little bit slow right now. We're seeing a lot of mid-screen play. Yeah, a lot of fireballs being represented here. Normally, Yurian's advantage is the strong normals in this game. Nice, nice. anti-air. Oh, no, didn't get the conversion after the headbutt. Oh, and a good bait there on the EXDP. Is that a, no, not enough to seal it meterlessly? He's going to try and keep him there, though. Yes, he does. AM Kid, no way out. He's going to have to deal with that for like 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. That Aegis is so good at setting up a nice, patient corner control game. You see, he really just waited to anti-air cleanly there. You know, after NCR, I was talking to both AM Kid and No Respect. Most of you, No Respect. And it was like a awakening call for these guys when they got a chance to play these international players. Oh, yeah. I mean, NCR, if you didn't hear the news, tons of international competition, and no one from California made it out of pools. Zero. Zero. I mean, it, it goes to show you what CPT 2019 is shaping up to be. Every single major has multiple killers in every pool that aren't even the local killers. Yeah. Oh, nice anti-air. He's got the corner control. Can he work it right now? No respect. Trying to fight it out. Good stage positioning. Everything else is basically dead even between these two. No meter on both sides. He's got the VT stocks. That's on the AM kit also about. He says, because his V trigger is so useless, I get to use all the V reversals I want. Oh, that's a, it's interesting. Yeah, because most people, they sort of manage their V reversals with the assumption that they're going to use their trigger at some point. Mm -hmm. But yeah, AM kid, I mean, Ryu, both triggers are not nearly as explosive as the rest of the casts. So that's a funny funny little uh, notion there that he, he pretty much gets the V reversal as much as he wants. Yeah, and not to top that off, like his V reversal uh, he knocks him back, gives him the space, lets him control the ground all over again should he be an under a lot of duress. Whoa, what a neutral jump. Good reads on No Respect's teching right there. Great, strong corner positioning. Gets that stun. Not going to be quite enough to finish it off. But a really strong string and a perfect bait on the headbutt right there. I loved how he sequenced that whole thing. It looks like it was just a straight sequence of plus frames, but to set that all up, he started with all the stutters that set him up for the stun, and then he went for the sequence, baited out the headbutt. Beautiful stuff. Really strong play, just like what we would expect from AM Kid here. It's really up to no respect to swing this back into his favor, challenge him, and try to hold AM Kid. You know, it, it's not like AM Kid is taking a bunch of 
risks mm -hmm. that you are there to hold him accountable for. We've reached the high level of mid-range here where you simply have to outplay your opponent yeah. rather than uh, rather than sort of expose what they're doing wrong. And that that's the hardest part in Street Fighter when your opponent takes it to that high level. Let's see if Yurian has what it takes, or No Respect has what it takes, to tie this one apiece. You know, he was also eating a couple of um, throws, right, early in the set. Oh, yeah. Which helped, him, uh, which helped set AM Kid up for the stun as well. So kind of biting a little bit, maybe a little bit too early on that. I mean, AM Kid's really good at representing, like, the throw mind game sooner rather than later, because even if your opponent techs, it lets you know that counter hitting is in your future, or the opportunity to counter is going to be in your future. Yeah, he did it just oh. right there. That was such a perfect shimmy right there, beating out that neutral throw tech from No Respect. It's just so much damage on the board. He's also so tight with his, uh, oh, wow. Oh, there is potential there, but I think a little missed input right there, and Amkid's running away with this. Yeah, Amkid is like, he's a very slippery player, right? When he oh. plays really tight, yes. those frame traps or, or the traps into throws, they're, they're all real. He doesn't really play these little subtle mind games to make you think about it. You're, so you're playing this kind of 50-50 in your head, in, in terms of the timing. He's really good at forcing forcing decisions out of you. That's what it really is. Great parries on the Whoa. knee. Those knee drops have been getting no mileage for No Respect. Amkid has been responding to them perfectly. And No Respect is pretty much going to have one last hurrah here. He doesn't have trigger yet. Okay, now he does, but he's taking heavy damage for it. For the first time Amkid is going to activate that V-trigger. And he's going to use it defensively just to try and retain some control. Armor up. Metallic jump here to sort of win the neutral a bit, and there's one opportunity there, but now we're back to neutral. He's gonna have to win this the old-fashioned way. <gasps> wow! And a great shimmy, not leading to max damage there, and AM Kid's defense is so good right now. Yeah, minor execution error earlier. Oh wow, no execution error there. AM Kid gonna finish the combo. Very strong finish right there. You know, AM Kid actually did drop that little punish, but I love that he was so ready to parry just the second hit yeah. of that EX shoulder. Because a lot of Yurians, if they're quite far from you and they want to sort of disrupt the neutral with it, mm -hmm. that first hit's going to whiff very commonly. So he was ready to parry the second, get the good punish, and yeah, finished off the set there. Mm -hmm. If we reverse back just a little bit with, uh, yeah, I think I saw this twice, where he goes crouching fierce into the fierce headbutt. I don't know about the first time, but the second time for sure was an execution error. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be a fireball. But you know you have to down charge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, down, I mean, input lenient, leniency in this game is a little funny. I mean, it's mm. a very lenient game in the first very. place. But when you're talking about charge, uh, if you're like, if you kind of accidentally evenly space out all your inputs, it can actually hold that charge for a very long time, even though your input is totally different mm -hmm. from what you were trying to do. It's you got to stay conscious of that when you have charge. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, I wasn't conscious enough of that. No respect. It's gonna go home at fourth place while yep. AM Kid moves forward in the bracket. So next up, we will have LPN going against LEGO Movie 2 Genesis. Well, look, look, the what? Where, where are they? Someone get them on the horn. I know that they're not busy playing other games right now. No, there he is. Right. Definitely not busy. Genesis Frenzy coming up. LPN, Set up his there he oh, is. Oh, there he is from the, from the shadows. <laughs> he just like appeared. I don't know. He didn't see. Yeah, like, you know how like angle. when when like two mirrors are kind of close together and you yeah. can kind of disappear in between them. Like that's where LPN was hanging out in the Twilight Zone. And you can see one of our uh, the boss ladies in the background, uh, Rose, running the show. Yes, she reminds me of the boss lady from uh, Kung. Uh, what was it? Kung Fu Hustle. Kung Fu Hustle. <laughs> that is one of those like bucket list movies that I actually haven't seen yet. I know. I know. I love martial arts movies too. Kento, it, we got to do something about this. Yeah, everyone get together. We can all watch it. But it was one of those movies that, like, Long's house. I mean, it came out a long time ago. Kung Fu Hustle, Kento. Yeah. He has not watched Kung Fu Hustle. Oh. <gasps> so we have two Operator people. hasn't either. Operator hasn't watched it. You haven't watched it. What is going on? I mean, when it came out, I was I was too young. My mom said no. It was PG thirteen. Or no, that's a rated R movie, isn't it? No, it's not. Ra is it rated R? I'm pretty sure it's PG. -13. All I remember is movie. that my mom was very cautious when that movie came out, so I actually didn't get the chance back then. But uh, now I, I have a lot of friends who know that it's a cardinal sin. We need to do a movie night. That'd be legit. I'll um, drive out for that. Movie night at the house. Everyone's invited. Everyone in chat's invited. Hey, 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 hey! hey. You need to calm down on the invites right <laughs> now, sir. I'm just more than Actually, no, you, you feel free to invite them. It's, it's at Long's house and not my oh, house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, everyone's showing up Everybody at LPN's up. house. I'll be cooking. 
Anthony will be cooking. The usual. I'll be cooking in game. <laughs> That's a lie. But anyways, I think we're going to be seeing Bert. Yeah, I was going to say LPN has been rocking Birdie throughout the evening. Now, LPN, this is even though Birdie is a flavor of the season right now, LPN represented Birdie heavily in season one. I mean, it was the very first before he played Bison. He was exactly, playing a yeah. ton of Birdie. So really, he's jumping back to a character that he's already quite familiar with. An early and, Birdie adopter. Yeah, and in, 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 in the season where Birdie is seemingly, I don't know about at his strongest, because obviously the you know Mena RD did so good back when he won Capcom Cup. Yeah. But there's been a lot of adjustments to the character, and we just know that where he's left right now, he's in such a strong position in the current competitive meta. Oh, absolutely. Very scary, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the biggest thing about Birdie is um, his mid-range game. Oh, yeah. You know, and it causes issues for characters who, like, love to thrive in that range. But Birdie has that extra little distance he could work with. He's like a grappler, but they've pulled back on one of the biggest disadvantages of being a big boy grappler, which is, you know, kind of poor mid-range. But Birdie's got some very fast long-range normals to work for him. It sort of reminds me of um, Geef in 4 -ish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Geef, had a, Geef had really nice normals in 4. What was unfortunate then was that a lot of the cast had really good normals mm -hmm. in that game. That was just how that game was designed. But yeah, it's very similar in that regard. It's a lot of whiff punishes and into your Oki. You can play very uh, stable, strong mid-range that way. <gasps> and he was negative two! Goes into the negative two, but he wasn't close enough yeah. for LEGO Movies, uh, sorry, Genesis Frenzy's crouching jab. It was one of those weird timings where even though you're negative, you know that their lightest hits are going to whiff. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of do like a delay light timing. Oh no, oh, wasn't guard. ready. That move, even in season one, we're like, they gotta slow this down. Yeah. We're still getting hit by it. The EX one's mostly the problem. Mm -hmm. Remember the OS's? Well, the o we they're still so in. Yep, yeah, they're they're all, yeah, if you jump away from the non EX uh, dolphin dive, <laughs> Birdie can, like, on reaction, super your jump back. Yeah, and that was a rough, rough round for Genesis Frenzy. LPN counter reacting to everything within milliseconds. Yeah, Genesis Frenzy did not have a lot going for him that round. Just strong mid range into shenanigans. Very stable play from LPN. You know, it's just kind of when I was thinking about, um, or just watching Fudo play at final round, oh, and yeah. watching him play at NCR, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, this, this character is going to be a problem. I mean, he, is, he already is a problem, but as more players who excel in that mid-range footsies game start to pick him up. I feel like one of the strongest aspects of Birdie is that it's you're not just buying into like a bunch of gimmicks and a yeah. bunch of shenanigans. You're buying into a strong core character that has all the shenanigans layered on top, yeah. sort of like in, in, a, in an Akuma-esque way, even mm -hmm. if not that top tier. Yeah. That's kind of what we're dealing with with Birdie. You can play so solid and go crazy when the situation really calls for it. But oh. he can maintain a match, although he does not maintain it here. Genesis Frenzy is going to try and finish this off in this round. Yes, oh, he yeah. does. Plenty of damage to seal the deal. Genesis Frenzy finally showing signs of life in the set. Now, this is winner's final, so it is going to be the first of three. Uh -huh. So this is not close to over. But I'm glad to see Genesis Frenzy getting one on the board there. I like the punish earlier also on the chains, being minus a lot. Big block on the bullhead and a strong read from LPN to get out of that command grab setup and get some damage on his side. LPN getting low with a couple of dashes. Little Genesis Frenzy is starting to really fight back here. Yeah, tagged him with the forward fierce and some good Oki back to neutral on top. Oh, no Ooh, anti -air. Yeah. That's and It's a big one. And it's big because Birdie has one of the most straightforward, easy anti-airs in the game. It's extremely similar to Mika's. The hitbox on oh, it is win. so strong. Great active frames. Birdie's crouch medium. If like if your opponent jumps and you're in the clear to use it, there's there's no reason not to. I, I mean, you, you hardly could miss it. It has a relatively fast startup as well. Even oh, against no. moves that are tricky to anti-air. Yep. It's so good. Fast startup. Active, really great range on it. Yeah, big. They just kind of fell asleep there, so a big, big drop from LPN. This is tied now, one apiece. Yeah, all tied up. And like we said, LPN needs to be uh, hold himself a little more accountable for the anti airs right there. Genesis Frenzy would not have had that that opportunity to tie it up if he was a little more consistent with that. Mm -hmm. But Genesis Frenzy finding him his way in. Good challenge on the normal dash forward there. You saw that negative. He was ready for it. 
Oh no, he tries to anti-air there and it doesn't work! Yeah, good stuff from Genesis Frenzy, spacing that jump in from quite far away, but Long has all the reads oh, on the command grab dear. right now. Oh, and that no. Oh, no. oh yeah, there's a the full confirm. Oh, he dropped the confirm. Butterfingers from both players right now. Yeah, Genesis Frenzy can't be happy about that. He really had the opportunity there. But like you said, Butterfingers on that finishing combo and LPN finds the loose hit in the next scramble. Yeah, fortune of, fortune of for LPN there because he dropped. Genesis Frenzy had the kill. He dropped. Man, yeah. oh man. The double drop was the only reason he had a chance there. Meaty overhead extends that combo. Great Oki, corner position, stun's getting high. Yeah, that should be for the stun right there, even though he went for a reset. Yep. Huge damage right here. Oh, and a challenge. Very interesting challenge. I don't know if he's if he was trying to delay. It doesn't matter, because Genesis Frenzy still gets that straight fireball to hit. LPN, it's interesting how he was able to challenge there with such confidence. Not afraid to get counter hit right there. Well, they have trained together as well. You know, there's, there was probably, it possibly is a read, because that looked like he was... When he could, landed, could he was crossing plus. under. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh the yeah. Bananas. Forward fierce. Lord's forward fierce extended herself into the banana right there. That banana is so good at, at establishing a zoning game. So oh, much it. pressure right now from Genesis Frenzy. VT yeah. is docked. He's going to spin it on the view reversal. Had to spend some meter on that view reversal. Still good potential to see the trigger. Dolphin dive catching Genesis Frenzy off guard and the dash up command throw whiffs for some reason. This is coming down to the wire right now. Who's taking game three? Oh, no! Oh, it went into the can! The can stuck around for so long there. And Laura extended herself into it, just like the banana earlier. Great air-to-air -air situation there from LPN, and he's in a strong position to take this. Oh, that actually oh. hit! And he caught him off guard, that forward fierce. Clipped him, canceled into the command dash, Lord. caught LPN off guard when he expected probably more of a combo there. Good stuff to Genesis Frenzy. Actually takes the lead. I and just noticed something, and I just noticed Mikey's not here. No, Mikey's not here. I'm not sure why. Huh. I don't know if he caught the uh, the NCR-itis. I've heard of quite a few people. I've quite a few the, people uh, did. NCR-itis. As we've seen on Twitter, but these guys made it out. They're the real heroes today. And uh, Genesis Frenzy in a set where it seemed like LPN had control for a majority of the time, found his opportunities to make the comeback here. Yeah, it was it was a little strange for the ending there, right? Because he he sort of he was standing there. It looks like he was baiting something and just just randomly got hit, clipped. Yeah. On the on the four fierce on top of that getting counter hitted. I wonder if uh, LPN was like looking to zonk the lightnings and was just so mm -hmm. hyper focused on something like that. Because that's the way that Laura would kind of like yeah. win the neutral there for a bit mm -hmm. to catch you off guard. But I think Bullhead is what holds her accountable at that range. Yeah. Or Bullhorn, I mean. You know, strong start for LPN, slowing down the Genesis Frenzy, now up with the lead and still staying hot. All right, good pressure here from Genesis Frenzy. Great neutral, too. There's the block, representing overhead quite a bit. Finally gets punished there. Oh, my God, interesting trade situation. Empty jump to bait the anti-air. He's going to get the stun. That stun added up so quickly, not off of full combos, but of just like loose hits right there. Oh, such a strong position. Similar to Yurian's Aegis. Very much. Banana. I was thinking about the yeah. same thing. The, the banana just controls the entire space there. Do you know how frustrating that would be in real life if someone won a fight because of that? <laughs> a banana? They just lay it down in front of you and they're like, come at me. Attack. He went to all the plus frames until now command grab. Opening him up, and even though LPN has had strong reads against the command grab, Genesis Frenzy still representing them. There's another what one right there. What a backdash. Yeah, I think Long has the sense that Genesis Frenzy is going to represent command grab a lot. He's been having trouble incentivizing him not to. Oh, yeah. He took the hard guess on there, hoping to absorb one of Long's normals. But Long very quickly is going to seal game four to tie up the score in very quick fashion. Yeah, looking very similar to game one where he just kind of ended things so fast that yeah. Genesis Frenzy didn't have much to work with. Now, we are four games in though. So game five is that time. You pull out all the punches. Yeah, all pull out all the stops. I think Genesis Frenzy needs to really uh,
take note of how LPN is pretty hard reading in his defense. Mm -hmm. He's either back down, yeah. Yeah. up. Yeah, especially against like the anti command grab steps. Mm -hmm. I feel like if Genesis Friends would do this, continues to lay on the safe pressure, he's going to be finding those counter hits in there. Yeah, just like set up for the play instead of going for the play so much. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, the play's been set up mm -hmm. already. We've represented command grab so many times at this point. Oh, oh what a... And the confidence to keep pressing buttons, even with the stun so high, and this reversal here has been so strong already because of it. Genesis Man, he's not done yet. Trigger is only just activated. He's going full Super Saiyan right now. Look at that. Jeez, man, no fear on this kid. Yeah, there, that was a no fear round because if there was any fear in this man's head, he would have pulled back when the stun was so high. But it was that trade situation that flipped the neutral to his side and the pressure situation that came off of it uh, hit perfectly. And look at this, Still already. Already so much momentum, a great whiff punish right there. Yeah. Nice block right there, though. But yeah, some, some big risk coming out of LPN early in the set. Another big risk, uh, Genesis Frenzy fails to actually punish it. All right, LP. Oh, good. Well, I mean, it wasn't a trip guard if it crushed right there, but good hit there in the neutral. And Genesis Frenzy seemingly running away with it now has to deal with Trigger 2 Birdie. Whoa! Oh, it hit it. Oh my god, the chain hit the can off of the ground and hit Riley that out was of the super damn air. Clever. That was some high level neutral right there, guys. Flicking the I can up in the air. That existed. He anti-aired with it. That was somebody needs to clip that, like for real. That was sick. LPN sleeping on crowd strong anti-airs, but he's nailing Genesis Frenzy out of the air with the can. Trigger two can. <laughs> he's, gonna need, he's gonna need to do a little bit more than that because he's running out of V-Trigger. 30 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, Genesis Frenzy knocks him down. Oh! Wake up buttons. Big damage into full Oki as he Big bet right there, meaty overhead didn't work out, and a big drop. That is unfortunate. No! <laughs> that's all, yeah, that's how I feel. We were no. all feeling it. Anthony said it. The end of episode three. <laughs> no! <laughs> there we go, he's dating the answer. Where's Padme? <laughs> uh. Oh wow, he actually light, crouching light kicked the can away? Okay. You can you can contest it? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'd love to see it again to confirm or Yeah, watch yeah, yeah. Later. Let's just we'll have to go to the tapes on that. Yeah. I feel like I would have <laughs> If I had that would have been good to know. Has that existed since season one? Kick it away. Oh no. He's jump he's jumping in. He's going for the mix. LPN challenging appropriately with crouch jab to get out of there. <gasps> good whiff punish on the EX Dolphin Dive. Oh the risk. Good save. awareness to know that that was going to whiff right there. We're mixing them in the corner. One more setup for stun, and there it is. Genesis Frenzy should be able to seal the deal. Good stuff to Riley there. Moving on to grand final, sending well, LPN And what to do the we say side. about not going over aggressive with the command grabs? He, at, he did play it more safe. Yes. He went for more guaranteed pressure. Yes, you're not, you're not playing that double-edged sword, but you're guaranteed to stay in the game instead of risking it all away. And it, at that point in the set, if you had already represented Command Grab to an extent, that you don't have to buy into the double-edged sword anymore. You've already invested that risk. They're already knowing that you've represented Command Grab. So you, if you just continue with the safe pressure, either they have the read that, okay, now he's going to continue with the safe pressure, or you're going to get the counter hits that you've already invested in. Yeah, and he got all of that. And he got all he of that. He literally got room. all of that in that final yeah, round. Yeah, in that final round. It all paid off there. So good stuff to him for making mm -hmm. that adjustment. And uh, we're going to be moving on to the loser side. LPN staying on the station against uh, against uh, AM, AM, AM Kid. Kid. Yeah, who took out No Respect just moments ago. Now, these guys had a long, enduring set last week. LPN had a very clutch reset. Uh, uh, AM Kid almost won straight through winners. Ryu, Abigail Bison, mm -hmm. right? Very nice reset. I think he reset with Abigail. It was the Bison that actually had the most trouble there. Mm -hmm. AM Kid, such dominant play against Rom's Bison, LPN's Bison. So he actually did have to re represent the Abigail. So I think that there's a chance that we're not even going to mess with Birdie right now. Unless he feels like Birdie is the pick for Ryu. I kind of feel like this is like serious mode activated. It's loser's side, and uh, Bison didn't cut it last time. We might go straight to Abigail. 
So we saw when we saw the bison oh. versus Ryu, it's gonna be birdie. Yeah, when we saw birdie. the bison though, um, the thing that was causing issues were some of those those tools and tactics that you use against other characters. Mm -hmm. Ryu has a parry. That's then true. He has a parry, which changes all the recoveries. Mm -hmm. And he's able to jump against EX uh, EX stomp, parry, jump, medium punch. Oh yeah, that was slick. We saw those punishes so well, he'd be parrying the head stomp and have all these sorts of Marvel-esque air combos to finish off with. But we are gonna be going with the birdie right now. Really doubling down on this character experimentation. I like it, I like the confidence here from LPN. There's some season one stuff right now. Oh yeah, you gotta this matchup a lot. You gotta wonder, like LPN's pers perspective of the character—is he playing season one birdie, or is he has he made all of the uh, necessary adjustments mm -hmm. there? Well, so far, Amkit with all the control, he's coming towards the corner, spacing it out, waiting, not waited a little bit too much, and whipped. Yeah, great whip punish on Amkit's fierce right there, getting scooped out in the neutral. Crash counter sweep, very well spaced. LPN showing sh showing so much familiarity with the character. Oh, it just catches him off guard right there. Just wakes up and does it. Not enough damage, but he got the trigger buffer out of that normal. It's not a true block swing, so if you block the normal, you still have to block low afterwards to not get hit by the chain. And birdies like to represent that, that little gimmick there. It's a gimmick, but it's safe. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of that sweep coming out of LPN right now against Amkit as well. I mean, Birdie's sweep is one of the best sweeps in the game, game. You know what, though? I bet I bet in his mind he has a Season 1 sweep where it doesn't have that extended hurt box. Yep. But now the extended hurt box is so crazy on it. I don't know if he knows the risk he's taking. But he's been spacing it so well anyways. <gasps> oh, what a bait. Oh, such confidence behind that. Amkit on the board. I mean, he had tons of control round 1, too. Mm-hmm. This is just the, the conversion and the closing the yeah. round. Yeah, LPN was able to clutch it out round one, but AM Kid's still showing great control in the matchup. Oh, and still no anti airs. Yeah, I mean, AM Kid might be testing LPN. Hey, you dropped these in the previous set. Are you going to actually hold me accountable for my jumps here? Working a nice whiff punish from LPN. Final there anti airy. Coming to the corner. Now we're holding good neutral. Great positioning in the corner. Stun's going down on Amkit's side. That's got to relieve some pressure there. EX Fireball out of the corner. I like that he got a little extra corner or anti-corner carry with the Tatsu right there. Oh, he's going to go back to, back again. Oh, <laughs> the command grab. Now, if this was trigger one, it would be done. That would be donezo. Oh, yeah. Oh, and he found a clean jump out of there. Follow up Oki. What's he got? Forward throw. Back to neutral, but he can see. He didn't Wait. block the second hit. Okay, so I knew that like normals into Bird. chain, there's no true block string. I didn't know chain itself had a not true block string into that second hit right there. That's so annoying. You yeah. really have to hold the block. You have to hold the block. Let him yank you in, then get your negative two. If it's the first time that you play against Birdie's chains, you'll learn very quickly how frustrating it could be that you yeah. had two hits and you didn't know. I feel like the I, the trigger is very strong, but we're going to see a, a dip off of situations like that over time when people get more used to it. But hey, M-Kid, in no oh. time at all, just mixed LPN to death. Yeah, he had the save jump and LPN somehow ate that. Yeah, he and we ate saw the, the whole counter thing. hit. We saw the counter hit. Yeah, pressing buttons right there. Wanted to challenge. Amk yeah, Amkit's not punishing that sweep on block. What if you could just jab DP it? I, I mean, there, I think there's plenty that you can do after yeah. they extended the hurt box. I'm pretty sure anyone can just sweep it. Sweep for sweep. And again, going back to the sweep. <clears throat> And it's kind of like the basis of his, his ground game so far, although that was a little bit sketch. Great wake up challenge into trigger two. He only needs one hit confirmed now. And oh my god, LPN, such strong mid range right there, so confidently walking in and out of Amkid spaces, sensing hesitation there because he doesn't want to get hit by the dang V trigger two confirms. So he was able to walk in for that command grab. Yeah, I mean, just like. Birdie's buttons, everything about Birdie in that range starts to become extremely dangerous. Oh, AM Kid yeah. with a heavy hesitation, LPN sniffed it out. AM Kid, however, fighting back right now. 
Unfortunate drop right there in the corner, but really it just gave LPN screen positioning and the crowd strong failed to ant here. Reuse jump fierce. LPN really hurting in this round. AMK about to tie it up if he can finish this. Oh! Okay, anything can happen here. Corner position for Birdie. I knew it. I freaking knew it. AM Kid, your girl's favorite with you with the wake up DPS. Nike boys, just do it. He even bet on the uh, non invincible one to save meter that does not benefit him in the next game. <laughs> he doubled down right there. I wonder which one it was. It like, was it a jab DP? Well, okay, so the reason. You're probably right. It was a jab DP because okay. I think that's the one that's throw invincible. And three so frames. Three frame, throw invincible, so you can take the strongest read meterlessly mm -hmm. with that. Yep. It's a double win. It's basically like a super tech. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of teching, you do the invincible, throw invincible move. Yep. Because teching it, it, sucks. Yep. <laughs> it's really hard to tech in this game without losing. I mean, you whiff tech, you basically eat the same thing as a CC. Whiff tech, get crush counter, it's one or the other, right? Yep. The only thing it does is deal with meaty time throws. <laughs> oh, representing some strong fireball game right here. Forward Fierce finds the double hit. <gasps> oh, that was all him. LPN finding some luck there with that jump in working out. Yeah, just mistimed the anti-air. Still has a hill to climb. But with that, oh, the, oh, that's a lot of the damage that he needs. This is going into full Oki. Oh, he actually spaced himself out there with that chain finish. EX Fireball gets a hit, and he backdashed into the Fireball, and it still hit the recovery frames. Round two. It is probably one of the best in the business in, in regards to, like, baiting that throw. Baiting that neutral throw tech with backdashes kind of... Uh, you know, it reminds me of when Alex Myers was doing it a ton with Cami. Yeah. But he's doing it with Ryu. I mean, Ryu has great dashes, frame yeah. data-wise. So it's not too surprised. That was actually a command grab huh. in the neutral right there. And he just got totally jumped on for doing it. And he's still eating things in the neutral into the stun. Such AM kid looks so strong. Such a strong bait right there. And he's really running away from it. A little bit of a mixed execution, but he has everything going for them. But I spoke too soon. But what can LPN make of it? Do the unsafe thing into that string. Oh, stun is... He's close to the stun. <gasps> he does get the stun. No TA, okay. though. He has to do... What? He, oh, no! He got the unintentional reset there just from trying to do the normal max damage combo. AM Kid really hung himself. <laughs> he just wanted to do the normal stun combo, but somehow that stand roundhouse did not hit cleanly. It actually started the new combo with no scaling. I'd have to say, probably both players were surprised at that. I mean, that's like a little bit of magic. On paper, yeah. that should not have gone LPN's way, but he found himself in this position. And it's so frustrating when you're uh, AM kid in this situation. You have to hunker down and know, okay, even though I totally earned that round, it didn't work out the way it was supposed to. I have to stay solid in this following round. And had he noticed that, that reset it, he could have gone for the EX bullhorn and just end it instead of getting that uh, second chance. Right, right. Speaking of second chances right now, AM Kid <gasps> with the fireballs, anti-airing. Anti-airing with the fireball. Oh no, and another drop? Oh, he's taking risks right there, throwing fireballs. The jump to avoid the chains. AM Kid goes up two games to one. Another strong read to seal the game right there. We're going into game four. So is he going to stay on birdie, or is he going to go to his other two? I mean, this is his tournament life. We, it does seem like, yeah, it does seem like we are going to character select. My guess is the switch to the Abigail, which, which did the most work for him in mm -hmm. the previous Wednesday Night Fights last week. I think that's a very safe bet. Yeah. And I think that's what we're going to see. Yeah, I don't think we would be going to character select if he wasn't going to go for the switch. He might just want the breather, though. Maybe. It's very common of LPN to, to go into character select just to take a breather. Although, right now, the birdie is not working out, bro. Oh, what? Wow, is he really doubling down on that? I think he's going to switch last moment. I think he's doing this so that AM Kid... Okay, All, right, All theories mind, are out mind. the window. <clears throat> oh, wait, he's not committed yet? He, not committed? Oh, no, wait, yeah, I you are. I kind of want to see him play that VT1, though. Well, basically, you get a ton of damage. You get more walk speed. Everything gets a bit stronger. But it's not like LPN wasn't hit confirming Trigger 2. Mm -hmm. I felt like he was actually getting a lot of mileage out of Trigger 2. So if he's going to swap to Trigger 1, he's going to have to give that up. One of the few problems, actually one of the big problems, honestly, with VT2 is the, the conversion post-activation. 
four. Well, I think that's the biggest opportunity that Birdie has. I think it makes all of his buffered normal so much scarier. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you have to fish in a more solid neutral yeah. way. It's definitely not BS V trigger mode activate, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh, that was nice. so yeah. far away, too. Double the reversals. Great cross cut on a dual shot. Clean, clean cross cuts right there. Not easy to do. Good punish on the EX bullhead right there. There's going to be the activation. And it's so even. Anybody's green. Back going to the corner. It's looking scary. Crushed him. Crushed him right there. He I think did not believe. I kind of want to think that that was the uh, jam DP right there because I kind of read him getting uh, command grab. It's either jab DP or just a jab. He is a big fan of that sandy jab. And this is all very good. He's very good at timing that on defense as well, typically. <laughs> oh, clean confirms for the stun. Not enough to kill, but the next setup could be the round. Wow, me, this is so yeah, clean. So great he goes for that thing. jump neutral jump and he's making you guess throw or button. That's a hood perfect. Yeah. That was only white life. Not even actual Final chip. Round. That was only white life. That's actually in between uh, the previous type of. Uh, How did he know that was going to work? Oh, okay. This is so far. This oh. is a double hood perfect right now. <laughs> and a single legit perfect. Yes. This, this is wild. He's close. EXCP. He's super close. One more mix up for it. And there it is. That was essentially a double perfect. LPN is sent home. AM Kid uh, qualifies for grand finals. Well, that was something. You know, it's like one of those times where it's just kind of like, oh, you just got double perfect. You just want to toss the cards on the just, ground. Yeah. Just be like, ugh. He did it with Ryu. Yeah, and he did it with Ryu. We you, saw the double perfect. At uh, yeah, NCR, we saw that NCR smug against. Uh, it was the Rashid player. It wasn't Takeuchi, was it? I'm not sure. It was uh, it Gachikun Takeuchi. It yeah, one of the Rashid players who took smug out finished it off with the double perfect. We almost saw that just there, but there was just a little bit of white life on AM Takeuchi. Not 100 percent sure. It was a good set though. That's a great match to review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are going to have your grand finals match Will coming it be two in up. a row for Arnold? Two times? Uh, it place? could be, which is very impressive because he's been grinding it out for pretty much ever since Wednesday Night Fights showed up here mm -hmm. in NorCal. And he's taken plenty of top eights, plenty of top fours, but to get the double back-to-back -back victory, that's a huge milestone for him. Absolutely. And taking out big names such as LPN. Mm -hmm. But he's it's got another hurdle here yeah. with um, the young blood, the wild one. The one who took long down today. Lego. Lego movie. <laughs> Lego. Lego movie. Genesis, Genesis Frenzy. Frenzy. Yeah, he's going to be fighting against the Ryu. Or sorry, the Laura against the mm -hmm. Ryu. Are they even over there? Okay, they're over there. Scanning. Yeah, they're getting ready. They're shaking hands. The pre, <clears throat> the pre game handshake. So they're going to be getting into it. Genesis Frenzy coming in on the winner's side has to lose before Amkid has the chance to knock him out. I don't recall seeing these two play each other very often. Yeah, I don't remember seeing this matchup against them, <clears throat> in between them, really. So I'm kind of curious if this may cause a problem for one or the other player. I mean, it's up to Amkid to hold neutral pretty much the whole time. I feel like if unfamiliarity sets in, it's going to set in on the person defending. Yeah. So I would say because Ryu's the one who's, who's trying to hold neutral, maintain it. Laura's trying to break it in whatever way she can to get in and mix them up. I feel like the if, if, if AM Kid is unfamiliar or feeling nervous or unconfident, it's going to affect him more than it's going to affect Genesis Absolutely. Lindsay, yeah. Not Not to mention, Laura is able to throw those charged fireballs from full screen. Yeah. And he throws one bad fireball. Not only does she have the fireball to cover her, she can jump over it. Oh, she yeah. Could, she could wait for it. I mean, she basically could just look for the fireball for, like, the next five or six seconds. Yeah, well, we'll have to see if AM Kid is able to, like, uh, hard react with, like, Roundhouse Tatsu mm -hmm. through the lightnings. But we'll, we'll, try, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see how accountable he can hold Laura for yeah. throwing those fireballs in neutral. Because that's, that's what dictates a lot of these matchups against Laura. How can you actually deal with the lightning? 
It'd be a combination of the lightning and then the uh, the beast skill dashes. And this is a rough start for AM Kid already. Lost, able to get into that position. Lost over 40% in the first first exchange there. Yeah, this is rough. Yeah, this this round one seemingly a wash, but here we go. AM Kid pushing back, trying to find his own momentum. Good reaction to the command dash right there, but the wake up button works and the wake up DP works immediately after. This is anyone's game right now. Though AM Kid does have a big hill to climb. We stop sweeping the trigger available. <gasps> he needs three, two, one good jump in or two big combos. Neither happen. Genesis Frenzy is just gonna put out that light kick and take that first round. Strong challenge there. AM Kid absolutely could have made the comeback. Had some strong moments there. If he could establish those with a life lead, he's he's gonna find himself in a much stronger position. Crushed in neutral and a strong escape. Bold read there against the command grab, but he's getting crushed. Wait, he's using VT2. Oh yeah, V Trigger 2, not the same party time that we normally see from Laura. I think he's uh, he can do it through fireballs, I believe. I, I feel like that's one of the, the ways that that little sidestep is good. He's finding his way in though. Oh, and kid with a very gutsy tech. Oh, and he another strong read against the command grab finds his that way. was on that the was other side. Sick. I don't remember seeing that before. The back roundhouse into that crossover Tatsu that was super cool. I can't believe that was on the other side. Really yeah. tricky stuff. Found his way over there and had a good meaty timing too. I feel like everybody that was wa that is watching this just got hit by that mix-up. Yeah, everyone got hit. If you're in the chat claiming you blocked that, you're wrong. Unless you play Ryu and know that setup. Oh yeah, whatever that was. Yeah. Well, Lego Movie also almost has his VT2 already. He's barely lost any health. Yeah, this has just been safe applied pressure. Oh, Command grabbed a little too early. It would have worked if it was timed appropriately. Now AM Kid has a chance. Stun is so high. Oh, Good if he could stun him. Yeah, if he could stun him. Now that dodge is actually allowing the stun to deplete more because he's not forced to block those fireballs. Game one in very strong, solid fashion goes to Genesis Frenzy. That was so needed for him because had he eaten anything, oh, yeah. anything, that was game one going to, why are you staring at yeah, us? Yeah, dude, he stared Stop right into my soul right there. Into our soul, sir. We're in different rooms, but he, saw, he found my eyes. I felt like he had a message to say to us. Round He's one. making eye contact with your girl. <laughs> Mid-tournament. <laughs> <laughs> she isn't even watching. She felt it, though. <laughs> she knew. Yeah. If your girl felt something weird, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to the match. Amkid powered up. 50% lead. Representing a strong fireball zoning game. He's saying, jump, I dare you. Yeah, he's finally find, find, uh, he's finding his win. He's finally finding how to play in that neutral game. I'd like to point out that he won without a single combo. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he landed a combo that whole time. I think uh -uh. that that was literally just held neutral, and Genesis Frenzy broke himself against the walls there. What's a little underrated from AM Kid is that he has a lot of different styles he can play. Oh, yeah. He knows how to switch it up. Mm -hmm. And he had a really good read straight through that lightning there with the roundhouse Tatsu. A lot of people don't get to see it, but like, it, it, what, what most people see from AM Kid is like some of the stylish stuff that he does with Yui, but yeah. he also has a very, uh, very strong neutral. He, like, gets a little underrated. He chooses not to play it very often either. Oh, go oh, oh my oh. god, and the fierce DP is what gets him out of that setup. But Genesis Frenzy finds another clean hit for the stun there. Uh oh, that yeah. Kill. Oh, he almost mashed out of that. Oh, he reset it. That that was dirty. Very nice. Very nice. One more round, and Genesis Frenzy will be on tournament game. Am Kid, though he's showing very strong signs of life in this set, the score is really not reflecting it in the end. Genesis Frenzy is finding really clutch ways to end each round. You see the baits right now as well. Oh, he. He didn't even wait for the fireball. He just went yeah. for it. I mean, that's the thing about it. Either you're going to have a good reaction under a fireball, or if you get twitchy and just represent it anyways, it's still so hard to react to. If you can layer it, it's a devastating mix-up there. Yeah. But it, even, even level one, layer one, it's really hard to react to. 
Yeah, those fireballs are really causing issues for Genesis Frenzy when he doesn't have the meter. And he had he made such a uh, AM kid made such a good adjustment there. Right when he popped into trigger two and knew that these dodges were going to start being represented, he went full aggro toe to toe. It wasn't a zoning game anymore. It was very strong in your face footsies because uh, he knew that Genesis Frenzy was going to be looking for something fancy with the trigger two. Yeah. To like get in through the fireball game right there. Very strong adjustment. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's part of the transition game. Like like. Like Arnold's been working a lot on that too. Yeah. It's this transition game and being able to to understand when he should be switching up styles and decisions. Mm -hmm. um, that was a great example of him actually realizing the situation, knowing that if he had continued the fireball game, it could have worked, but the risk was so much higher. Oh yeah, the risk reward table dramatically changed, and this is what can happen when you get one good jump over that fireball. You can bait a DP out. He and <laughs> might be stunned really soon. Oh, he oh, jumps and gets Oh my that. goodness. I Taking a big risk at the end of that combo. And yeah, he gave AM Kid the number one opportunity to make the comeback. But the wake up buttons at the most stressful point in time, that wake up button works out. It's always the meaty that'll get himself killed. That's when the wake up button is going to work. But that's, a, that's one of Genesis Frenzy's style. Like, he's such a double edged sword, you know? Like, he, yeah. he's willing to. He's willing to pay for it. He, he is ride or die. Oh, yeah. For sure. One last job. You had one thing to do, but you couldn't control the kid. Yeah. He's a different kind of player that if you want to condition him, you don't necessarily condition him. What you do is you just try to get him to do things a little bit less. Yes. Just a little bit less. Establish a little bit more control, and that's the control that we're seeing from AM Kid so far in this round. 30 seconds of non-stop fireball. Genesis yeah. Frenzy with literally no answer so far. Holding neutral perfectly. ST style right now. A style that is harder for Ryu to do in this game than pretty much ever before. Oh, but Genesis Frenzy found his way in, but AM Kid said, no, I'm going to stifle the comeback now rather than later. And it was a good, strong read. We are all tied up. Fight. And that's, it's going to be hard with Genesis Frenzy for every time AM Kid has meter, that EX uppercut is going to be in the back of his mind. Oh, misses that conversion. And now if Ryu's going to whiff that Tatsu over your head, you should be stand blocking it for the good frame advantage. If you let it whiff, you're going to be manually timing your punish, and that can go wrong in so many ways. Oh, this is so dangerous right now. Oh, and he represented it again. And that is going to get AM Kid more mileage later when Genesis Frenzy actually backs off yep. of his mix-up game. Right there. That guy, they kind of got, oh no, but a great punish on the V-reversal. Oh, he bet again. He bet the farm three times. This guy, neither player has fear. Whoa. But Genesis Frenzy comes out on top, two games to one. AM Kid is playing super strong mind games here. Great neutral adjustments. Genesis Frenzy doing such a good job of capitalizing when he gets the one or two opportunities through AM Kid's strong neutral. What if AM Kid played Guile? What if? <laughs> He's so good at keeping people away with a character that's not that good at doing it. I wonder, is he, is he going to the character select screen? Is he considering uh, a Kuma? Neither of these... Oh, he, he, you has, know a, he's he has a Kage. No, he's not going to play Kage. I don't think he's going to. He's not going to play Kage. But if, when if I, he's going to switch, it's a Kuma. Yeah, if he's going to switch... I haven't seen as Akuma yet. Oh, uh, no, he's in it. Not a switch. He's in it to win it with his main character. I respect that. But the trigger, I think we should be seeing trigger one. But you know what? Trigger two is what got him into tournament game. I just haven't seen it pay off. Mm -hmm. I have not seen trigger two pay off in any respect. And we know that Laura's trigger one is sort of universally effective <laughs> against the cast. Yeah. It, it just kind of makes Laura a better character. I think if anything, what it's doing is it's neutralizing the whole stun situation when she's so far down. Oh, interesting, yeah. Right, because like, you're seeing the problems right here. Like this is it already has started. It's so difficult for right now, Genesis Frenzy as of right now to get past those fireballs and jump against them correctly. So he's gonna look to activate when his stun bar is a little bit too high to try and neutralize the situation. Like that. Yeah, interesting. It's allowing him to get the stun gauge low. We've seen it a few times in the set already. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, almost found his way around the fireball there. Like AM Kid's style is so like Oh no, he actually committed to that. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing such heavy representation with the command grab, and as scary as that mix-up is, Genesis Frenzy is opening himself up to get encountered. 
And when your opponent is hard reading that escape, you know that the safe pressure is what's actually going to uh, pay off there. Round two. Point. Yeah, that round though is just, he. Yeah, like I was saying, AM Kid has the ability to really rack up that stun so so fast. Yeah. In neutral, mm -hmm. it's a rare thing to see. Yeah. And so this just allows him to have that potential to come back. Now he's not necessarily using VT2 to set up the plays. It's just to keep him alive as much as possible so he can get that one string, that one sequence going. That's all he needs. Yeah, Amkid has had the life lead advantage pretty much every round. It's always been up to whether or not Genesis Frenzy can pay it back triple when he does find the opportunity, but I don't think this is the game. No, it is not. Oh, that was a wake up. Oh, I guess he's holding up against Command Grab. But that was interesting right there. Oh, you know, it seems like Laura will dodge something like a fireball, but then there's still so much recovery frames off that forward dash. Genesis Frenzy isn't really finding himself in when he has that good read on the trigger two. I think uh, I think trigger one can actually just pay off so much because trigger two hasn't done anything mm -hmm. outside of reducing stun, as we've talked about and before. Maybe there's a consideration now. I, mean, I think if he was to use VT2, like he's going to have to mix up his the fact that he could walk afterwards yeah. instead of just v Oh, right, instead right? of just going straight in so for the command just, dash. Yeah, move in just a little bit and, and threaten the position. Yeah. Or you threaten the position to, ha to create the hesitation to throw the fireball. When you create the hesitation, that's when you V-skill in. And we have seen him switch back to trigger one. I, I mean, it's, it's only going to... Because he's relying on the comeback so often mm -hmm. in these rounds. Trigger one is the comeback trigger. It absolutely is. 100%. I mean, you, you're dealing with three bars, but you're dealing with just a stronger end game situation. Late round situation. Yeah, he's blocking a lot of fireballs. What's strange to me is he hasn't tried neutral jumping against them. Yeah, neutral jumping is... Su I mean, it's commonly underappreciated, but that half second that the fireball has to stay on screen yep. if you neutral jump it, it disrupts the zoner's timing. Yep. They have to reestablish their neutral, and you have time to walk forward, and their next fireball will be risky. You can jump over the next one. Yeah, and if I recall so far, in this round so far, not a single neutral jump. It's either a forward jump or it's a block. Yeah, if and it's a perfect time. If you're going to be blocking fireballs, you're actually setting up your opponent to throw their next fireball very easily. Especially on the position, right? He could yeah. be like plus 12, and if you jump against the next fireball, you're oh, it's wrapped. Big drop, but he blocked it. Standing that time, but he kind of had the spaghetti there. Found another opportunity to get some damage. Ooh, nice. EXDP, yeah. he was still recovering. Yeah, that's just a clean reaction to the situation right there. That wasn't a guess with the DP. Mm -hmm. Good assessment. AM Kid so close to the reset. Reset point, and we will be having another three out of five if AM Kid can pull it off. Found his way in with the EX shoulder. Through the fireball, but nothing came of it. He tried to dash in, but not plus. And AM Kid was waiting for that. And he's on the verge of resetting oh. it. He does reset it. We're going back to 0-0 zero, zero between these two players. That was one of those situations where Genesis Frenzy really just needed to take the throw there. AM Kid, too strong counter hit confirms. Sealed about half of the round's life there. So, so Genesis Frenzy, as, as a player, has come a long way. But we're starting to see some... Um, uh, what do I say, right? Some holes in his fundamentals yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of playing defense. The lack of neutral jumps and, like you said, right, having that fireball be on the screen for an extra half a second allows you to step in just a little bit. I think it's, like, less familiarity with how to break even in mm -hmm. neutral so that you don't commit. Yeah. But Genesis Frenzy, whether it's on defense or offense, his choices are very, very committed. Yeah. So he either has to be right or he will die. But there's a lot that you can do in neutral just to break even. You're testing your opponent's patience when you do that. you reset the whole neutral. Yes. It's, it's back to 50-50. And at the end of the day, every fireball that Ryu throws, he's risking getting jumped in on for half of his life. If you're breaking even in neutral with neutral jumps or, or whatever, you're forcing him to commit to round more one. risks, more and more and more, without you know having the the round one. Because if you're not like giving him the anti air opportunities, you're not eating that much yeah. damage in neutral. To top that off, it also compounds like the decision making, the hesitation on the opponent, right? It starts to make them say like, how much do I really have to hesitate? And as soon as they start to hesitate, and you can recognize that. That's when you go in, that's when you find that mental lapse. Yeah. That's when you really open them up. They stop anti-airing, they stop doing everything properly. 
and Genesis Frenzy is starting to finally open up AM Kid a little bit early in this round. Yeah, if he can make AM Kid a little scared to throw the fireball, he's going to have more mileage in his mid range. Oh, a little late on that one, and that's a V Trigger fireball, so it recovers quite a bit faster. Uh oh. Beautiful block against that overhead. The tricky thing there is that uh, AM Kid wasn't crouching the whole time, so I don't feel like he even had to react to that overhead. I think he just kept holding back to lock out of pressure. Alright, the reset immediately going AM Kid's way. Even though it was such a slow set before, AM Kid came out on top. We're seeing a lot of the same here. Genesis Frenzy getting good damage off of his opportunities. He's just not getting opportunities that often, but here's another one, two in a round. <gasps> oh, and block. the big bait. And that's good memory on Genesis Frenzy's side. He had, like, all of the DPs that were represented previously, that was actually quite a bit ago. For So for him to have that read at this point in time is actually impressive. Good memory. We gotta remember also, this is um, leading, leading into the third round. He was already down. I think at that point, it's like, I could get the comeback, but let's see what happens. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, at the end of the day, you gotta bet on something. Mm -hmm. So no it's not shame. a bad bet because AM Kid will be able to represent that again later on in the sets. And that's not this round. This is like the first time Genesis Frenzy has had a lead in a while, and there it goes. Let's see if he can get it back. A lot of a lot of activity on wake up on Genesis Frenzy's side. He's pressing buttons almost every wake up. I feel like Am Kid has not had to represent throw here, but finding his way in, slick, tricky reset off the EX elbow. What a Finally. bait! He represented lightning, V trigger dash cancelled out of it to bait the DP, found himself crossing un under, and then he tick throw him. And that is such a dangerous tick throw. This, as a, as a veteran, I am not a fan of that play, even right. though it worked out. Because that short, it had he neutral jumped, he was dead. Oh, yeah, if he was holding up. What we really needed was the, the V trigger cancel out and then just a forward fierce just, punish. That's all on he the needed. DP. He yeah. would have killed. We just needed the clean punish. Didn't need to go for a mix up there. I mean, it's one of those situations where yeah, yeah. you didn't think it all the way through. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there was a big risk there. If AM Kid was holding up, that over, was a wrap, man. it would have been a wrap. But wow, Genesis Frenzy, even with AM Kid representing so much neutral control, finds game one, and now we're back to the same, struggling in the mid range. Oh, good bait right there. Lightning blocked the Tatsu. Big opportunity. Oh. I, I'm curious why he's not using the EX command grab to get through the firewall. I'm, I'm very curious. Right. I wonder if he's saving the meter for something else. Yeah, because so strategy. You, you can pretty much do it on reaction if you're able to react well enough. I mean, it's a half circle motion, right? Yeah. So it's there's some delay there while you're trying to swing the stick, but I think that's total. It's totally viable. It is. Which is why I'm curious, because yeah. like, from the ranges that he's looking at, where he's getting hit as well. Which is funny, because he seemed to use Trigger 2 to cover that option. Mm -hmm. But really, yeah, you're right, EX Sunset Wheel. I think that's what's going to do it for him. Let's see what, what continues to uh, evolve here in the neutral. I'm actually very curious, because things are changing up a little bit, but he still has not used EX Sunset Wheel. Yeah. Um, he's got the meter for it. He does. Sometimes I almost feel like he's deliberately eating it just so he can get the VT1. <laughs> I mean, that was a season one joke, like, thanks for getting me below half health. Yeah. Hey, good punish on the Veerverse right there. Good damage. Wanted to bait out another DP. Amkid did not bite. Anybody's round right here. Amkid finds his way in. Big damaging throw with the white life. <gasps> wow, the standing light kick. The stuff. Wow. That v -skill. Yeah, that V-Skill command dash didn't quite get there in time. Good challenge on Amkid's part. Tied up one to one. This is like the most long and drawn out it could have possibly been up to this point, and it's continuing to go so back and forth. This is reminding me a little bit too much of last week. Oh yeah, a lot of it. Luckily, uh, <laughs> let's just just time check. Luckily, it's about an hour and a half earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys, are, you guys were running Street Fighter 4 as well last week. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which is great. Yeah. Can't, can't wait for that game to come back around. Really fun to see that. Oh, my God. Oh, no stun there. Has one more chance. But, yeah, that's another perfect for AM Kid. This I, dude has a lot of perfects today. Whenever AM Kid has such a dominant round, you can still see him shake his head like, man, I'm playing so well. Why is this so tough? <laughs> It's tough because, you know, Laura needs one opportunity to, to dish that damage back. 
playing practically picture perfect yeah. in, terms of, in terms of the zoning. It's very impressive neutral, for sure. Finds his way out of the corner. Strong, strong fireball game. It's been the name of the game here for AM Kid. Representing so many different timings. Yeah, he's trying to sweep like the extended hurt box when he throws a fireball. Dan he's trying to press standing roundhouse. Dash forward roundhouse through the lightning. Genesis Frenzy has his opportunity. What can he get done here? The big bet. Oh dear. So you gonna pay? One more mix. Oh, and he gets it there. Okay. AM Kid definitely committed a little bit of seppuku right there. He, you know, the thing, <laughs> the thing with the EXDP is that there was a big gap there. Now that gap. There's still a read that your opponent is going to meet you, but from further away. So that's what you're betting against. You go, okay, even though there's a gap, I'm still going to DP. But when he does DP and it is baited, it just looks oh. like you got baited from a mile away. He finally tried the EX Sunset Wheel, and he got stuffed in the face with a four fierce. All right, AM Kid almost got another double perfect. This man is honestly on fire tonight. He's just got to find ways to seal the rounds more consistently. <laughs> Been on fire the last two weeks. I know, right? And even when, when he was playing casuals at NCR, man, he was mopping fools up on casuals. Oh, yeah. Watching. I mean, he knows how to practice at 100% power at all times. This is looking so good for him. He's going to be on tournament. <laughs> it's so clean, Anthony. Dash into Tatsu. What a reaction. It's so clean. Dude, it's it's good. And he hasn't had a reason to change it up because, kind of like you said, right? I, I, I'm pretty sure. So even though we said that, or I said that um, I would like Round to see neutral one. jump. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a next layer waiting Oh, for yeah, him. absolutely. And you still want, even when your opponent has a response to something, you still want to represent something so that you can have a read on where they're going to go with it. Yep. But right now, Genesis Frenzy has his opportunity. Corner position, Amkid finding his way out. Equalizing the spacing Ooh. situation. Dash forward, had time to anti air. Oh no, but that's a clean jump. Big damage. Meaty elbow, manually timed meaty elbow. That is wow. what they took away in what, two, two. season 2.5 or something, something like that? that. Something they like they that. took away that auto meaty, but Genesis Frenzy said, let me manually time that. Strong round for Genesis Frenzy, trying to stay alive, staying on the board here. But can he get past this? Really intensive, this this focused I mean, man. It's literally like the spirit of John Choi is entering AM Kid when he's making these fireball decisions. He's able to represent so many fireballs and not get jumped in on that much. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen anybody play with fireballs and not get jumped in. Not, not only not Nine get jumped five. in, but you're also uppercutting a lot. Yeah. Right, you're anti airing properly, you know, not that one though. Yeah. Only a couple actually, you know, objectively bad fireballs have yep. been thrown. So many strong decisions from AM Kid here. They're potentially a match Their tournament, tournament point. point. The reset has gone downhill faster than the pre reset set. Does AM Kid have the download at this point? Ooh, got clipped by the forward fierce and neutral, eating the lightning now. Getting mixed in the corner. Finds his way. Oh, I thought he found his way out, but a nice hit confirmed to V skill. There's the DP bet. Holy crap, it's going to be 2-2. Two, two. As long as he doesn't mess up this super on. confirm. There we go. Oh, my God. 2-2. Two, two. AM Kid, you bet with one DP, my friend. That was literally one DP is what opened himself up there. And it, it, was, it was a forward fierce in neutral that started a lot of the shenanigans there. AM Kid really just has to maintain the super strong neutral he's had the entire set. Yeah, I think he needs to take a little bit of a breather here. Just think about it just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I mean, the DP, it, it did so much for him in the pre-reset. You know, what might be new for AM Kid, considering how long he's been in the community for, when you play a long, intensive set, that, especially in a style that requires yeah. a ton of focus, Oh yeah. your mental stamina is going to run out. Oh, absolutely. That's why longer sets are pretty objectively representing a higher level of play. Mm -hmm. It's about memory, stamina, focus, jitters. <laughs> it's everything. It's, it really is everything. When you run out of mental stamina and you're yeah. starting to make some bad decisions, that one or two bad decisions can cause you to lose that entire tournament or the sets. Yeah, and this is the game where you're going to pay for that heavier, for sure. 
And Kid though, still looking pretty strong. Still sticking to that neutral fireball game, looking really good. Crazy strong hit confirms right now. And look, are we gonna see another zoning? Oh no, messed up the DP. Genesis Frenzy has an opportunity on the heels of AM Kid's anti-air mistake right there. Okay, again, and that's one of those things, right? Yeah. Later on in the set, you start missing a few things. That one little minor mistake. We're back to neutral though. Things are looking good for AM Kid, except for these plus frames that Genesis Frenzy got off of the trigger activate. The mix in the corner, the blender, that's for stun. This is so frustrating to watch from AM Kid's perspective. Oh, it's no. a kill combo. We're on tournament point. Genesis Frenzy, he literally had two two chances so that round. And it all started with that drop DP. A drop DP. You have to hold AM Kid responsible for that. It wasn't just shenanigans, it was Genesis Frenzy bet on the jump. AM Kid dropped the DP. Yep. That was the number one reason why that set didn't go that way. And now Am Kid's jumping. He's the one feeling uncomfortable in this situation. Even with the life lead. Okay. That was the first shot we've seen in a very, very long time from Am Kid. Yeah. But he's opting to go back to the fireball game. Yeah, I think he knew that that was like the biggest risk he took the whole set. Because Laura, one anti-air, you're mi getting mixed. And we know that this is what's working good, but one EX shoulder has opened himself up, but that's a negative four roundhouse. Yeah, that was an extremely close-up roundhouse. Yeah. Very big bet right there. Try, maybe trying to catch a backdash or something, but here it is. The Tournament. last game, last round, the longest pre-reset, post-reset that we could go for. And it's even between these two players. <gasps> Laura has is finding an opportunity. Amkit knocks her back with the V reversal, back to neutral. It, it could all come down to one jump. That's what's so stressful about all this. Such strong fireball game, but it could come down to one jump. He spins that EX trying to bait out the armor. Oh, there it is! That's you the big called it. bet that one, Genesis Frenzy has invested two. in. Oh! It's coming down to, to down to the wire right now. Both players have trigger. Activation on both sides. They're going in. Activation on both sides. Scramble. It's a scramble. The entire round is a scramble at this point, but the wake up no! button. Oh! It was a wake up button that actually worked out, and Genesis Frenzy is feeling many things right now. The wake up button actually worked. For all intents and purposes, that was actually Genesis Frenzy's set, but he dropped the follow up combo. AM Kid, the back to back, the two time Wednesday Night Fights Oakland champion. I, I think it is fair to say that both players were suffering from mental fatigue. Yeah. Nobody had <laughs> any clue what the I mean, hell. I stopped talking for a happened. minute because I'm like, this is like a 15 second scramble that's happening right now. That was so enduring for both players. Banana peels everywhere. Everyone's slipping, everyone's dropping. And then the wake up button on, on Genesis Frenzy's side, it worked. If he but had we got converted some awkward, yeah, some into awkward. something, but it's hard, dude. You're in the moment and all of a sudden, you know, it's final round. You just played God knows how many so rounds. So many games in the same matchup. And it wasn't just like, it wasn't just evenly matched. It was getting pummeled by AM Kids Neutral for 95 seconds per round and having a miracle comeback over and over and over. Like that is so exhausting to summon up that energy over and over and over. And then for that to be the ender, uh, very understandably, the, the, you know, the emotions I mean, that we, are running We saw here. that dude just like walked up and just like, I can't do this I would, right now. I, I would do the here. same like, thing. I, I probably would have ran around the whole arena just like, I, I, don't, I can't, I can't right Frisbee now. my hat across the venue. I feel for him, I feel for him. Yeah, but that was almost a Wednesday night fights under the belt. That was a that was a really good grand final set. First place gonna go to Am Kid. Second place, Genesis Frenzy. And then third place, LP. who got the champion? <laughs> that's right. And then fourth was no respect. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> good stuff to our top four tonight. That was fun to commentate. That was exciting. And you know they're gonna come back stronger next time. Someone's gotta take down AM Kid next week. I, I just think it's really interesting to see the flow of, of kind of the meta. Uh, and especially from young kids like Genesis yeah. Frenzy, I think watching those flows, um, that, 
from the get go, we've always known he's sort of a double edged sword, but yes. we got to see it in a really long set. We got to see it in a really long set. We got to see it fully play out the strengths of it, the the, the drawbacks of it. So I, I get where he's coming from, but as yeah. <laughs> it scares the hell out of me to play that way. Absolutely. Oh, for sure. Anyways. We're going to set you guys free. We'll see you guys at the next Wednesday Night Fights. Just next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. See you then.